you two have a slight disagreement about <laughs> how these figures are panning out, don't you? Um, Richard, to you first. Um, as, as Eamon was saying there, it, the, these numbers would sound alarming if it meant that come the 6th of September, there are 125,000 children around the country sitting at home twiddling their thumbs for the rest of the year thinking, oh, I missed, missed out on schooling there. That never happens. It doesn't, but it doesn't happen because councils have got really good over the last few years. Well, congratulations. About, I mean, about, that's something to celebrate. The trouble is, though, as more kids come into the secondary school system, it becomes harder and harder. The trouble is councils just don't have the powers to ensure that kids have that basic right of a school But you have an place. obligation to place them. We do, but we don't have the powers to ensure that obligation because actually why? happens. Because now most secondary schools are academies and councils can't force academies to expand against their will. And a few years ago, the powers to create new schools were taken away from councils so we're trying so to is this do a this power struggle between you and central government who've decided that schooling should be more independent in terms of head teachers should decide how to manage their schools rather than it being councillors and I wouldn't like call it a power struggle. What we are saying, though, is we have the responsibility, quite rightly, to ensure that every child has that school place. We just don't have the powers to do that at the moment. And if we had the powers to, say, start a new school, should be pretty obvious, but we aren't allowed to do that at the moment, then managing this expansion in the number of kids we've got in this country would be a lot easier. So are we overpopulated? We're not overpopulated. The number of kids are the number of kids we've managed over the last few years. But you are quite right to say those kids have a basic right to a school place. But we don't at the moment as local authorities have the powers we need to right. make sure we have Jeff, that. where do you differ with Richard on this? Well, w where we agree is that there's no surprise we knew those children were in the system. That, that, that's always been there. And we also know nationally there's actually a surplus of places. There are, there are more places across the country. But of course, if you're a parent, you're worried about your child and the local school. That appears to be particularly in London and the South East. That's where the big issue is. And where Richard is right is that the system of local authorities is not the same now as it was previously. And I'm not sure that the solutions which we might have had with local authorities forcing schools to do things is the right solution. Because it seems to me as school leaders, we recognise we have a responsibility to youngsters. We need to work with both local government and national government to make sure that every child is getting a But a they do get place. places, don't they? That's why it's... The, I mean, you know, the uh, Department for Education is saying these figures are misleading and so on. Uh, because I think 94% receive offers at one of their top three choices. So is this a sort of slightly made-up story? Not, uh, not in really. In the sense not that it's, you know, uh, OK, there is a bit of discomfort for a few parents and a few children, a bit of uncertainty in that week leading up to the beginning of term, but come half term, everyone's happy mm. and everyone's forgotten about it. I think not. I, think, I, I, would, I certainly wouldn't be using the word crisis. I think we, we know that there are going to be lots more youngsters in the school system. We need to do something about it. And all I would say is now that you've got something like 65% of schools being academy secondary schools, y you can't expect that a local authority will have the same level of information that they might have done in the past. And what we need is local government working with national government, identifying where those particular areas are mm. so that we're coordinating an approach and planning to Jeff, it. Jeff, what decides who gets a place or, or who, who doesn't? What criteria? Is it based totally on academia or what? This is, this is oh, so, oh, sorry. Place. Yes, sorry. So it, it depends. Each school often has their own criteria. Most it's, it's decided by which child lives closest to the school. So geography. Geography, although often you know, there are bits of the areas that have still got selective schools. There's a whole different debate about that. Let's not get into now. But the, the challenge is, so with an expanding number of kids and actually with local authority powers declining as the num more and more mm. schools convert to being academies, is this problem potentially gets worse and worse. So... You know, it's not difficult to know the number of kids going into the secondary school system. You just have to look at the number of kids in year four and five in the primary schools at the moment. So we've seen this bulge of kids coming down the line and we don't now have the powers to manage that. So basically you want to be in charge of schools again? We've, we never run schools. We don't want to run schools on a day-to-day -day basis. Head teachers do a brilliant job of that. What we do say is that there's got to be someone who's got some local knowledge better than civil servants in Whitehall deciding where new schools go. OK, thank you both very much indeed.